what is a database? Hold on a second. Maybe you are a smarty pants and you know what a database is. But trust me, in this section, you may learn a thing or two that will surprise you. So no matter what level of experience, just hang in there. Promise we'll get to some really fun stuff. You see, I remember when I first learned about databases and SQL. I couldn't understand how it was all connected with other fields. I would learn about web development or Python or machine learning and I had no idea how this SQL or databases really related to those fields. So I want us to always understand the big picture and connect the dots so that the things you learn in this course, you understand why it is useful and how we can use what we learn to do some really interesting things in the world of tech. So what is a database? A database is a collection of data and also a method for us to access and manipulate that data. So let's think about this statement. Data is everywhere, right? Data is now the most valuable commodity in the world. Companies that control data, companies that have a lot of data, like Uber, like Alibaba, like Amazon, like Facebook, like Google, are some of the most valuable companies in the world because they have this data. And every day in our world, we produce data, right? Whether it's drones with footages or location data, mobile phone apps, maybe website and web pages, even security cameras. We even have autonomous cars. All those things collect data. And the crazy part is that it's estimated we produce 2.5 quintillion bytes of data every year. And by the way, quintillion means this many zeros. It's a lot of zeros. More data is collected in the past two years than the entire human history. So where does all this data go? Does it just get stored in a notebook? Does somebody with pen and paper write it down? No, right? And how can we really have that statement that more data has been generated in the last two years than all of human history combined? I mean, sure, there's more humans on Earth, but there's always been the same number of atoms in the universe. You can't just create something out of nothing. When we say that data is being created more and more, the idea is that we're capturing this data. We're saving this data somewhere to be used in some way. Data is something that we as humans create, but without capturing that data or using it, it's completely useless. We use oil to power cars, but if we don't extract that oil, if we don't use that oil, it's completely useless. So we need a way to capture this data. And that's what databases do. They capture this data for us so that we can use it. And here's another crazy number. 44. The digital universe, that is the data that we store, is estimated to be about 44 zettabytes of data. How many zeros? Once again, lots and lots of zeros. So all this data is being captured in a database. Without a database, we wouldn't be able to store this massive amount of data. And more importantly, we can do some useful things with this data. All those things we saw, like autonomous cars, Instagram, Facebook, Google, without data, none of it would work. So without a database, the ability to query a database, that is to ask database information about its data, it would be impossible for us to do a lot of things. But here is a secret. We mentioned that a database is a collection of data and a way for us to access and manipulate that data. But the secret is that databases aren't anything special. They're just hardware and software. They're just computers. So a database, even though we always see this scary looking cylinders, are just computers. We see images like this all the time representing databases, but they're just computers. It's hardware with software, so that is hardware is the mechanical part, and the software is the actual code on top that allows us to collect and use the data really useful. So in this course, what you'll see is that we do the first step, which is one, we install software 
to turn our computer into a database so that we can all practice. And two, we add data to this database that we create with this software, and then we're gonna start using it and analyzing it. Because at the end of the day, a database is exactly this, just a disk drive, a way for us to store ones and zeros on a computer. And the beautiful thing is that as long as we can install something, we have a computer, something with memory that we can store memory in, and we have a machine, a computer, we can create a database. That is, we can create a database even on a mobile phone, on our desktops, or on our laptops. And that's what we're gonna do in the course. But when you see somebody having a database, that's all it means. They have a computer somewhere in the world with software installed for it to store and manipulate that data. Let's take a break and I'll see you in the next video. Hold on, you didn't learn anything in the last video? Oh boy, you're a tough cookie. Don't worry, we will get into more and more advanced topics later in the course, but let's finish our talk on databases because again, I want to connect the dots for us. We learned that a database is essentially a computer with some database software on top. In a way, if you've ever used something like Google Sheets or Excel, that's a database, right? It's a way for us to store data and the Excel software allows us to manipulate that data. In a way, a pen and paper is a database as well. It's not digital, but it's a way for us to store data. Now, the reason we always see these images as databases is because of this. This is called drum memory. And I'll link to this resource so you can read more about it. But back in the day, before we had disk drives, this is how we stored data. It was called drum memory. And as you can see, it's cylindrical. And that's why for historical reasons, just like our save button on a computer is a floppy disk, this drum memory represents usually databases. But again, in this day and age, they're all just computers. So because a database is just a computer and some software, are there many different types of databases? Well, yeah, there are. I mean, we talked about Excel, right? Essentially, you can use a spreadsheet that you get in Excel to store data. So why don't we just use that for all companies? Why do we need something bigger, something like a database that we're gonna talk about? See, the problem with things like Excel is that eventually you'll get to a point where you have too much data, where an Excel or a spreadsheet just can't handle it. And on top of that, there are many things that databases that we'll learn about in this course will solve, such as making sure that database has integrity. So that is not everybody can just modify data or delete a database. You can store terabytes of data. You can combine different databases. You can automate steps and use programs to do some really interesting things that you might not be able to do on a spreadsheet. Again, something we'll cover later on in the course. But some of the most popular databases are here. This is just a fraction of the databases out there. Because data is so different, because every company, every user uses data in a different way, we have different databases that do things differently and each one of these have pros and cons. Now, the beauty is that in this course, we're gonna cover some of the main databases and way to interact with them. And later on, we'll learn about the pros and cons so you can decide which database you should use based on your situation. But let's take Keiko Corp as an example. How would Keiko Corp or a company use a database? Well, we mentioned that there's lots of data coming into a company and a company as big as Keiko Corp has a lot of uses for data. For example, you might have product managers and product managers always have to know the product that they are working on. For example, drones, they need to get data and learn about the product's health, whether a product is working properly learn from data, learn from different information to perhaps improve a product. You have things like marketers and marketers, you need to find out information from data. You wanna analyze business decision, give you insights about how to market a product. 
or you might be a web developer, a mobile app developer that creates apps on phone or on the web. And those apps usually have things like user sign-ins or profiles that you need to store somewhere so that when a user comes back onto your app, they're able to reload their information or maybe they're playing a game and they need to start the game from their last saved location. You also have things like data analysts or data scientists that understand data, that analyze data of a company and make decisions such as perhaps even building machine learning models so that a company can serve better information to a user, better products to a user. Analyze different parts of the company to maybe see which employees should get a raise, who to hire. And then you also have data engineers or database administrators. These are the people that actually help set up the databases in a company, update software, install things, make sure that databases are connected with one another. They might use things like Hadoop, Facebook's Presto, Google's BigQuery, Amazon Redshift, and set up all this infrastructure in place for other parts of the companies to use databases. Now, as you can see, there's lots of data. And more importantly, there's lots of different databases, different people in a company that use databases in different way. But hold on a second. All this data is used differently by different people, right? Different operations, different options. Each of these people are interested in different parts of data. And this is why you're taking the course. You're taking this course because you want to hopefully be able to work in any of these fields. And the good news is that even though there's all sorts of databases, even though there's all sorts of jobs, one of the most common ways to work with databases, to ask a database a question, what we call a query, to interact with it, to use that information that is so useful, we use SQL, a way for us to interact or communicate with that database. And that's what this course is all about. Let's take a break and I'll see you in the next video.